Welcome to Church in the Wild. Welcome to a brand new year. Give yourself a round of applause. You made it. You have 100% attendance in 2024. You are on a roll. You are here every Sunday. If we were in Sunday school back in the day, you'd get a little silver sticker. A little silver sticker you get to put on. How many of you went to Awana or Sparks? Am I the only one? Oh, a bunch of us. All right, you know about those stickers. Those stickers were everything when I was a kid. Man, I'm so excited about this series. I'm so excited about this new year. I am pumped for what God's going to do this year. And um, this series is uh, kind of kind of a born from the 90s, to be honest. I think the 90s were the beginning for us of many of us getting our ideas and views of life from pop culture. Most of us in the 90s began to look and we were plopped down in front of a TV and there was this new thing called MTV and they told us this is the real world and we began to watch it and many of us began to learn by looking around at culture. But unfortunately, culture has a lot of different voices. I mean, Google anything. And you're going to find a hundred opinions or maybe a thousand on any individual topic. You will find every expert on it. You can, you can Google um, anything. I mean, let's, let's just talk about for a moment and celebrate the fact, though, that the Lions and the Browns are going to make the playoffs together. We can celebrate this, okay? Yeah. yeah. Talk about this. I mean, listen, if God can make the Lions and the Browns make the playoffs, he can do a new thing for you in 2024. Let's just be real. Those are two walking miracles right in front of us. But, man... Google anything about sports, you're going to get a million experts, won't you? You'll get every podcast in the world. I was at Rachel, Rachel and Raj's wedding, and I was, I was getting ready to do the wedding, and one of the groomsmen who I just met was like, hey, you seem like a cool guy, but your team definitely cheated. I'm like, cool, thanks, dude. Let's go do this wedding. <laughs> right? He said, subscribe to my podcast. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> Man, there's, a, there's a, so many voices in the world. And culture's all around us. Like it's, we live in a culture full of voices. Whether we want to admit it or not, we are inundated each and every day by voices. Turn on your phone at night or during the day, you're going to get, you know, a, an expert on every topic. And it's hard sometimes in a world full of voices to actually find value. Because as much as I would love for us to always just walk around with a Bible in our face and only learn from Scripture, I think often we, we, we tend to not have that be reality. And so when, when all of culture is just inundating us and bombarding us and talking and talking and talking, it's really hard to learn how do I find the value that I need to find. Often in life with all of these voices, uh, these voices can lead us to distraction they can lead us to fear or paralysis because, man, you don't want to make a mistake because everyone's going to say all these different this and this, right? There's division. And often I find that as Christians, what we do is we formulate an opinion based off of culture. And then we go and look in the Bible to back up or justify the opinion we've already formed. So what we'll do is we'll say, well, I think this about this topic, and I've got enough friends or enough experts or doctors on social media who are going to agree with me, and now I just need to find a scripture to agree with that, and I'm good. But God's plan is instead for us to go to scripture, formulate our opinions, our thoughts, our identity, and then from the foundation of scripture... We can then look for things in culture that, that bring validation to that. What we do in America is we just do it in reverse. So if someone famous enough says it, then we just find a scripture to agree. God's plan, find the scripture, let it inform you and tell you, 
And if there happens to be value, then that's a bonus and a blessing, but it doesn't determine what you believe. So in this world of constant voices, I wanted to do this series on, on voices that bring value into our life when we hear something they say. And one of the current main voices in our culture is someone named Jelly Roll. No, not a literal jelly roll. We did not eat the jelly roll out front of Tim Hortons from, you know, from Tim Hortons this morning. It's a man who's a singer. He's kind of like the country version of Post Malone, I would say. And his name is Jelly Roll, and he's actually extremely talented. He's very hardworking, and he has some sayings and things that I think would provide religious tones. Like for one of his songs, he calls himself the long-haired son of a sinner, which I think is a struggle all of us can emphasize with. Maybe not the long hair, but many of us struggle with the same sins that our parents struggled with. Odds are really high if our parents struggle with bitterness and division, so will we. And, and in this song where he talks about like, man, it's just, it's my, it's my DNA passed down. I'm struggling with these things, right? Um, if your parents struggle with stuff, often you will too. And some of his advice like that, then he has some advice that's, that's not, not really great, but it's relatable, right? Uh, he's, he has a song, and in his song he says, I only talk to God when I need a favor. Um, I don't recommend you approach that strategy with God. I don't think that's the greatest. It's relatable. I, th I think we all agree that sometimes we struggle with that. But just compare your prayer life to your relationship with your spouse for a minute and see how that goes. If the only time, men, we talk to our wife is when we need, we need to be able to go golfing, how's that going to work out for us? Ladies, if the only time we, we talk to our husband is, is when we need a favor from him, we need the credit card, or we need to go do something, or we need him to go do something, that relationship's not going to be very strong, right? Like, often in life, we need to reevaluate and look at what culture is saying and say, yeah, I, I relate to that, but my prayer life's not going to be limited to just, God, I need a favor, and boy, I need one right now, Right? So he has a lot of spiritual tones, and he has a lot of advice that's relatable. But in an interview recently, I heard something he said, and instantly I was like, oh, man, that's it. He said in, a, in an interview, I want to tell you that the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror for a reason. And when he heard that, I was like, there's value. There is value in a voice from culture. I'll say it again. I want to tell you the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror for a reason. And this lines up biblically in a lot of ways. Jesus said in nine, uh, chapter, Luke chapter 9, verse 62, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And Jesus didn't just say this. Jesus modeled this. If you think about how Jesus lived. So Jesus gets crucified. And then he rises again. And if he were us, he would then walk into Pilate and be like, told you so, right? Or he would go to his disciples and be like, hey, listen, all of y'all doubted me. <laughs> I'm getting new disciples because I rose and I'm going to, you know. But Jesus didn't live in the past. In fact, Jesus makes Peter move forward after his resurrection. He goes to him and he says, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? The same exact number of times that Peter denied him. And, he, and every time he says, do you love me? He's like, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And then he immediately transitions from that was past, now we're moving forward. This is how your life's going to go from now on. Jesus did not spend his life in the rear view mirror. The Apostle Paul added in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, not that I've already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to lies ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Now, this is so interesting to me because he's, he's pushing this idea of move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward. And then he throws in, let those of us who are mature think this way. Because I think, I think it's added in there because often we tend to think of that as like a childlike thing. 
to be positive in our cultures like that's cute you see the world through rose colored glasses that you're like a child but real world real reality over here we know how it really goes but Paul is like man what I did with 2023 is I put it behind me and I press forward for the prize this is why the Bible says Paul does a new thing the Bible says God does a new thing his mercies are new each morning Paul is not advocating that we simply forget our past He's advocating for something greater. And in Hebrews chapter 12, he sums up again. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I got a lot of scripture. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings to so closely to us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder, the perfecter of our joy, who for the joy that was set where? Before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I think one of the better definitions for this idea, one of the better scriptural applications for this idea, is found in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I promise we're going somewhere with all of these scriptures. I would highly encourage you to underline this scripture. This is really, really good. Proverbs 4, verse 18. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ears to my words. Do not let them be out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are like life to those who find them and health to one's body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free. From perversity, keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path of your feet and be steadfast in your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Here's this, here's this powerful passage by Solomon. He's saying, hey, hey, keep your eyes where you are going in life. Um, we watched the, uh, a couple of playoff games for the, for the uh, college football playoff. None of the guys who scored touchdowns scored by looking backwards. None of them would score a touchdown while looking over their shoulder. Why? Because you end up going the direction that you're looking. Uh, we drove from uh, Huntington, Pennsylvania, and it was about five hours yesterday, and there was a big snowstorm coming behind us. We, at no point... Did we drive by looking in the rearview mirror to see if the snow was catching up? Why? Because we weren't going backwards. <coughs> Excuse me. But often in life, spiritually, what we do is we spend so much of our life looking back. We spend so, can I get some water? We spend so much of our life obsessing over things that happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago, problems we had in the past. So, when it comes to our past, when it comes to the year 2023, how do, we, how do we look at 2023 and therefore how do we look at 2024? Well, when it comes to our past, we can do a couple of things. We can either love it or lose it or learn from it. Those are the three options, really, when it comes to looking at our past. And when I say love it, I don't mean... Like, just love it like, man, the past was great. I mean, like, never letting go of what we used to be. Uh, when, I, when I'm talking about loving the past, I would say we're probably the guy who peaked in high school. You know what I mean? Like, everything was better in the 1990s. Everything was better, like, everything. All the stuff was good way back when. At some point, we become that person who's like, you know what? Music's no good anymore. It was only good when I was 17. You know, uh, the good old days, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nothing better than listen to a person drink water into a microphone. <clears throat> you can either love your past or we have a temptation to lose it and to say, you know what, it doesn't exist. You know what, those people in my past don't exist. You know what, those problems in my past don't exist. You know what, those failures in my past don't exist. You know what, those things in my past don't exist. Or we can learn from it. And here's the truth. If we don't learn from it, we will repeat it 
over and over and over and over again. The thing that we do with our past biblically is we learn from it. We look at it and we say, okay, this happened. How can I learn from the good? Okay, this happened. How can I learn from the bad? So I started doing this thing, and I would encourage you to do it, but I'll tell you it's very brutal. Write down everything that happened in 2023, and then ask yourself, how can I learn from this? Typically what you'll do, or what I started to do, when I, when I started doing this, I would say, oh, well, I learned that this, I was right about this, and I was right about this, and I was right about this. And then God started showing me, hey, how can you learn? How can you truly learn? And I made a list of over 20 things like, oh, I was wrong about this, wrong about this, wrong about this, wrong about this. And it was brutal and it hurt. But it, we, in order to learn from our past, we have to be willing to admit that we need to learn from it. You don't only learn from the things you do right. You also learn from the things you wish you could take back. You also learn from the things you, you said that you shouldn't have. You also learn from the mistakes you made. You also learn from the past by learning and being willing to learn. In my life, I have a motto, and it's something that I want to achieve in life. It's something I want my family to be in life. It's something I want my church to be in life, my staff to be in life, my team to be in life. Anyone around me, I want to be someone who has the attitude of a relentless learner. I want to be someone who every situation and every opportunity, I can say, okay, now how could I do better? That means when I go on family vacation, how could I do better? That means when we, when we get in the discussion, we'll call it a discussion, <laughs> we get in the discussion at the Thanksgiving table about you know, the, the political people that we do or don't like, how can we do that better? I want, I want 2023 to be a year where I'm not afraid of it, and I don't hate it, but I'm not clinging back to, the man, it was so much better back then. I want 2023 to be a year where I'm like, okay, I learned this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And I'll be honest, if you make this list, it's going to be really, really tough on you. You'll come out having made the list, being really ashamed of yourself at points, like, man, I need to improve. But if there's not about 20 things on there that you could learn from, you're probably not being honest with yourself. So when it comes to our past, we can either love it, we can lose it, or we can learn from it. But the, path will, the past will stop us from moving forward if we refuse to learn. And now what do we mean by our past, all right? Well, we can learn from our past success. We can learn from our past success. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 3 is a very, very interesting passage. Deuteronomy 1, 3, In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th mo month, Moses spoke to the people of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment to them. Now look at why he's doing this. After he had defeated Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and Og, the king of ba Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth and in Edro, Beyond the Jordan, in the land of Moses, Moab, Moses undertook to explain this law, saying, The Lord our God said to us in Horeb, You've stayed long enough at this mountain. Now think about that. These guys who are traveling nomads just defeated two kings in one battle. You talk about ultimate success. Talk about we need to stay here and celebrate. Talk about we need to stay here because, man, we got it figured out. Talk about we learned, we did this, we did this. And God says, hey, you've stayed here long enough. Stop celebrating. Get moving forward in the direction I'm trying to get you to go in. Nothing will stunt future growth like past success. Nothing will stop future growth like past success. When we think about past success, it can stop us from moving forward because we can say, well, we did this back then and it worked, so we're good. This is why so many of us have a difficult time winning in life today because we still are looking at pre-COVID and saying, well, this worked before COVID, so why isn't it working now? Think about, I like to make analogies about sports. So if you look at like football teams or basketball teams, the teams who refuse to learn because while we used to be good in the 80s are no longer relevant. 
The teams that only just adopt everything new and they say, well, we don't care about anything else besides being cutting edge, they're not really relevant either. The great organizations and the great teams say, this used to work back then, this is working now, how do we learn from both of them? And if you want to move forward in this year, you cannot rely on, well, this worked for me in high school. If you want 2024 to be the year where God says, hey, I'm doing brand new things, then you can't rely on old ways to do new things. God has a new thing for you. And if we spend our lives just saying, well, in high school I was pretty cool, then we lose sight of what God has for us in the future. We have to let, learn to let go of past success, learn from them, and move forward. Uh, also, past patterns, past patterns. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, this is crazy, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea, divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. Now, this is really interesting to me because you would, I would think that Moses is doing the right thing. So if you don't know this story, the children of Israel have been crying out to God for years. And every time they cry out, God begins to do something for them. And they get in this pattern of saying, God, send us a deliverer, send us a deliverer, send us a deliverer, send us a deliverer. God sends them a deliverer. And it's rather than embracing it, they begin to say, he needs to do this and he needs to do this and he needs to do this and he needs to be this and he needs to be this. And then finally they escape Egypt. They get to this Red Sea and God's like, cross it. And they're like, okay, well, wait, we need someone to tell us what to do. And God said, I already told you to go forward. And then they hear, is, they hear Egypt coming behind them, and now they're panicking, like, what do we do? And Moses says to them, stand still, see the work of the Lord. And if you watch Prince of Egypt, this is the best part. And he's like, stand still, see the work of the Lord, because he's going to do something. And then he goes to God on the side, and he's like, God, you better do something. And God says, why are you crying to me? Do what I already told you to do. See, so often in life, we are stuck because of past patterns. The, the, the thing that will destroy your relationship is something as simple as the discipline of not being willing to put your phone away at night and be present with your spouse. It's as simple as a pattern of life that will make or break your relationships. So often we wait until the very last minute and then we say, God, you got to come through. And God's like, yeah, I will, but... Why didn't you pray for the last two years when I was with you the whole time? Our past patterns can prevent future success. God, you got to do this for me. Okay, how's your prayer life? Well, I don't really pray unless I need a favor. Okay. Well, how about we develop in this year a brand new rhythm of prayer so that God is more than a crutch. He's a person who we have a relationship with. And when that moment comes that we do need him, it's as natural as, hey, you're already right with me. God, let's do this together. Past patterns can prevent future success. How about this? Past patterns, past problems, and past people. Past problems and past people. So often in our life, we are held back by past problems and past people. See, many of us today are fighting fights from years ago with people who live today. This, this happens in this form. We have a coworker who looks like a distant relative who offended us one time, and we never said anything to that distant relative, so we've been holding biz, uh, bitterness from that distant relative for like 15 years. And one day that coworker who slightly reminds them, us of them walks in and says something, and we just lose it on them. And they're like, what just, <laughs> what just happened? And to us, we're like, you shouldn't treat me this way. You shouldn't do this. But they never did. But we've just been holding on to patterns, problems, and people from years ago that we never dealt with or learned from. And so when we encounter a new problem, we bring past baggage along with it. I was going to use, instead of Jelly Roll, I was going to use Pumbaa because Pumbaa said you got to leave your behind in the past. And I find that <laughs> this is ironically really true. 
We can learn from our past, but, but if we obsess over, well, 12 years ago, someone said this, and 13 years ago, this happened, and 14 years ago, I had a teacher who looks like my new boss, and so I don't like my new boss, we will never go forward in the new year. We will prevent ourselves from new things if we're still fighting battles with people from when we were six or seven years old. And ironically, many of us are fighting battles with people today, but we're really holding on to battles from when we were younger. We really are holding on to the fact that people laughed at us one time because this one person said something, and so somebody new says something, and we're like, I, I am so upset. And it's really upset and being bitter over something that happened in middle school. And so what we have to learn to do is learn from our past, forgive, and move forward. Many of us have unresolved issues that are preventing us from seeing future potential. Many of us have unresolved issues that are preventing us from seeing future potential. In my own life, it looks like this. When I was, when I was young, um, I am a pastor's kid. And I would go to every pastor's thing in the world. Like if you imagine any meeting that's ever been had with pastors, I've been at like 12 of them. And unfortunately, those did not always go well for me because I have a brother who's like Chuck Norris and John Wayne put together. And he loves to preach and sing and be loud. And I, I don't really love any of that. I'd rather just sit and read a book and let you guys solve all this. And then like I'll get up at the end or something. And so... I would go to these meetings, and I would go in, and what would happen so often is people would be, pastors would begin to treat me in a way that was very rude, to be completely honest, like make fun of me, mock me, talk about my hair, talk about how skinny I was, talk about how small I was, talk about the fact that I had glasses. And so I didn't even realize for years how much bitterness I held from past people and pr past problems until I joined a network of pastors, and they were like, cool, we're having a lunch. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to that. I'm like, why not? Well, there's pastors there, and they're the worst people in the planet. And I would, I would have conversations in my head about what they were going to say about what I wore before I even arrived. Y'all ever do that with people? Like, well, I already know what they're going to say. I already know what, how they're going to treat me. I already know how this is going to go. I've seen this before. Yep. Yep, I know how this will turn out. I would go to meetings with pastors, walk in, sit down, and refuse to speak to anyone, being the person that I was afraid they would be to me because of past problems with past people. And one day, one day, I, I got a message on Instagram from a pastor, and he's like, hey, let's hang out. And I was like, oh, man, I'm in trouble. I, I told my wife, like, I got to wear, I gotta wear <laughs> like a dress shirt. I can't wear my ripped jeans. I can't wear my Jordans. He's like, let's get breakfast. We got breakfast. I showed up 15 minutes early. I had my hair combed. I was, like, super respectful. And he was, like, the nicest pastor I've ever met. And I was like, well, this is weird. I thought you were a pastor. I thought you had to be a jerk. I thought that was, like, required. I was holding on to past problems with past people from middle school, high school, and college, and projecting them onto present people. And so often in our life, we blow up on people because we're projecting something onto a past person. We project into a coworker what a teacher said to us 12 years ago. We project onto our children the insecurities we face about our past. And it stops them and it stops us from moving forward. We often project onto our spouse a battle we had with an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend 20 years ago. We will take bitterness out on our spouse over the fact that someone stood us up at the high school dance and they danced with our best friend instead of us. And so when our friend walks in, when our husband walks in and we see that friend, we're like, oh, I know he's going to leave me for her. That is projecting past problems, and past people onto current people. And so if we want to have 2024 be the year that we move forward, we learn from our past. We learn from it. 
We learn from our past successes. We learn from our past failures. We learn from our past patterns. We learn from our past people and our past problems. And we look forward. If you read the rest of the story of Exodus chapter 14, God is really encouraging them to learn from their past, live in the present, but look forward into the future. He's saying, hey, move forward. Yes, I know there's an obstacle called 2024 in front of you. It's going to be great. Attack it with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. It's going to be brutal. Attack it with enthusiasm. Often what we do is we are still living in COVID problems in 2024. Can I just tell you it's done? It's over. It's okay to go to people's houses. It's okay to go to the mall. It's okay to be kind to people. It's okay to post because, yes, everyone lost their mind and yelled at you during COVID, but they don't have to mean that. That doesn't have to mean they'll do it again today. It's okay to share pictures of your family. You're not a bad parent, no matter what that person on social media says. The rearview mirror is smaller than the front windshield for a reason. Don't live in a direction of life you're not heading. He says the sun rises new every morning and those of us who are mature realize that and we apply the fact that God's mercies and his grace are new every day and he's doing a brand new thing in and through us this year and God is going to move us forward because that's the direction God always goes. How do we know this? We look at Jesus after the resurrection and what does he instantly do? Look at my hands. Okay, we got that. Now, here's what I need you all to do. Here's where you're going. You're going this direction. We call it the Great Commission. It's the ultimate mission statement by a man who would not live in his rearview mirror. How, how we would do it is like, hey, I know you all doubted me, and I know you all did this. I know you all did this. I know you're not going to, I'm going to find new. I'm going to look for new because you guys, Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Okay. Move forward. Feed my sheep. You are the rock that I'm going to build my church on. He said that to a man who shook like a leaf when a, a teenage girl asked him if he knew Jesus. He said, you're the rock I'm going to build my church on. Why? Because Jesus knows your future. He sees the future in you, and he makes new things every day, and new mercies, and new grace, and he does new things, and this year will be a new year. Let go of the past. Let go of the past problems. Let go of the past things. This is the year. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it because he's doing this. God is doing this. God is moving us forward. So move forward with him. Don't spend your life looking in the rearview mirror. Jelly Roll taught us this. I mean, if we can learn from anyone, it's a man named Jelly Roll. Like, I, I'm low-key jealous of the name. So practically, how do we accomplish this in like two minutes? <laughs> Write a vision statement for your year. Write a vision statement for the year. If you will not define it, you will not do it. Write a mission statement and a vision statement for the year. In 2024, I believe that God will do what for you and through you and in you and with you. The reason our marriages struggle is we don't do this. The reason our relationships struggle is we don't do this. We don't approach every new year like it's a new opportunity to get to know our spouse. So write a vision statement for 2024. Have a word for the year. This is something that I've been working on now for a couple years. I like to give each year a word and just define the year off that word. So I say to myself, hey, this is what God is doing, and this is the word that he's given me, and he's given me this word for a specific reason, and so I'm going to look for opportunities to fulfill this word. God gave me the word renew this year, and so I'm looking for God to renew me. That's what I'm looking for him to do. And I'm telling you, if you write a word down, you will see it everywhere. And you will begin to make it happen simply because you wrote the word down. So ask God, God, what word do you have for me? What word do you have for me? Begin a new discipline. Begin a Bible study. Join a group. Schedule a daily prayer. If you don't schedule it, you won't succeed at it. It has to be on your schedule. Make a new discipline. If you want to let go of 2023 and look into new things for 2024, make a new spiritual discipline. God, in 2024, I will do this. 
I will pray. I will fast. I will sleep more. I will rest more. I will, whatever it is, learn from 2023 and make a new spiritual discipline for 2024. Maybe it's, maybe it's, you know what, I'll be here for every, every Sunday. Maybe it's, I'll be here at every, it's whatever it is. Find a way to make a new discipline so past patterns do not defeat you. Then, make a list of things that excite you about 2024. This one is so much harder than you will ever believe. You want to know if you're a realist, pessimist, or optimist, try to do this. You'll come up with about two and most of them will be like that so-and-so is not here. <laughs> you know, like, like I'm happy in 2024 my cousin's not coming to Thanksgiving dinner. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm happy in 2024 Jim Harbaugh's finally gone. Like, no, that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about make a list of things for the new year that excite you and aim for more than 10. You will not believe how difficult this is. But write that list down, put it on your fridge, put it on your TV, put it as a screensaver on your phone. Hey, in 2024, I am excited for God to do this. Avoid corrupt conversations. Avoid being a critic of yourself. You know, we would, we would never hang out with people who talk about us the way we talk about ourselves. Not ever. The way I talk, I, I, like I'm in here setting up, and it's snowing, and I'm talking about myself while I'm setting up, and I, and I hear that, and I'm like, my goodness, who, he's the worst man alive. Who would want to be, you would not hang out with someone who talked about you the way you talk about yourself. Avoid being a critical, corruptive person. Avoid being someone who's constantly tearing yourself down. If you are constantly tearing yourself down, how do you believe that God will move you forward? So many of us, our future potential is stopped by our own self-talk. So many of us say, well, I could never. Well, that's good for them, but not me. Well, I couldn't do that. Well, I'm just, I'm this, I'm that. And it's negative, 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 negative. And then the moment comes where God puts the thing right in front of us. And we're like, oh, I couldn't do that. Not me. Because we have allowed ourselves to believe the lies we say about ourselves. So avoid, avoid that. Surround yourself with people who are positive. Ask God to help you move forward and look forward. I would, I would write down, hey, in 2024, I'm going to move forward and I'm going to look forward. And here's how I'm going to do it. And I got a word for it. And I'm excited for God to do these things through that. I'm excited for, for Wildlife Week this, this year. I'm excited for barbecue and baptisms. It's fun. I, I am excited for things this year. I think God's going to do amazing, incredible things. So I'm writing them down so that I see them and I remind myself. And when I, rem when I see them, it stops me from, oh, man, well, what could happen this year? I mean, how, you know. What are we going to get? Giant tarantulas attacking us this year? Like, Talk positive. You're not manifesting. You're simply talking positively and not corrupting yourself. So often, uh, worship team, you guys can come up here. So often in life, we think of corrupt communications, corrupt good manners, right? We, we hear that. And we think that that means like certain letters, certain four-letter words we see on TV shows. And it does. It, it can mean that. But the, the word for corrupt is that it, it, it's something that tears down like, like, like rust. It, rust corrupts your car. It tears it apart. It breaks it apart. And so often we are breaking relationships apart because we're talking ourselves into these things because of things that happened so long ago. And so our, our relationship with our spouse is struggling because we had a relationship with a parent that allowed us to have corrupt communications. So we tear down our spouse and ourself to our spouse because of something that happened 10, 15, 20 years ago. So many of us live in the 1990s. 
So many of us live in the early 2000s. I'm dating myself. So many of us live in the early 2000s with problems and successes and failures and patterns and people and we never get to live the day that God made for us. But along comes a man named Jelly Roll and he sings songs and says he's a long-haired son of a sinner and he only talks to God when he needs a favor. And then he says, there's a reason the rear of your mirror is smaller than the windshield. When we look at scripture and we see that Jesus says, no man puts a hand to a plow and plows a field by looking this direction. We see, we see Paul say, I press forward. We see Solomon say, hey, the sun rises and those of us who are mature, we rise with it and each day we move forward and we look in the direction we're headed. That relationship that you're holding on to from high school, from college, it's time to let it go. That, that relationship that you're holding on to with a parent, it's time to let it go. That relationship struggle that you're holding on to with an in-law, it's time to let that go. You want 2024 to be the year, it's time to forgive yourself and your spouse and your family for things that happened 10 years ago. So you did it wrong in the past. Learn from it and move forward. It's time for some of us to simply write, I forgive you, on a piece of paper to a list of people and then light that list on fire and get it out of our life and move forward. It's time for some of us to say, you know what? I've been holding on to something for years, years, and it's time I make that call and get it right. The rearview mirror has to be smaller than the windshield because we're not going backwards. Christianity is a faith that goes forward, 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 forward until the day that Christ comes and he permanently wipes away every one of those tears from our eyes. That day is the day we're ultimately looking forward to. And when he comes, we will live in perfect harmony. But until then, we've got to learn to look forward and move forward. And walk with Christ. Uh, this year, I have a statement that I wrote for myself. I want to walk wherever Jesus is walking. Wherever he's walking, I want to walk. And he's not walking backwards. Jesus didn't spend his, his, his eternity reminding us of what we did as sinners when we were 12. That's not who Jesus is. Jesus says, I have new mercies, new mercies, new mercies. So whatever it is that you're holding on to, let it go. Learn from it. And move forward into all that God has for you. Let's stand. Here at Church of the Wild, we believe that we grow best when we grow together. You made an intentional choice to grow together with us today, and I believe that that is not by accident. I believe that God called us together today so that we could all grow in Him together. So thank you for making that choice. Here at this part of the church service, we like to talk about why it's good for us to be joyful and generous here at Church in the Wild. When I think of that, I look back just a little while ago to last Christmas Eve and to one of the, the best services I think we've ever had, to a building that's absolutely packed, to a building where teenagers are involved, kids are involved, all of our families meeting together and worshiping and gathering and growing together. And for me, that's a reason that I, I like to give to Church in the Wild because I like to see what God is doing. And here we are starting off a brand new year where God is doing new things daily and here where God is moving and working already. And I'm so excited for what God has done and I'm excited for what God is doing. And I cannot wait to see what God will do through all of us who give to Church in the Wild. When we give to Church in the Wild, it allows us to then take the gospel to our community, to our state, to our country, and around 
the world. The gospel goes around the world through your generosity. So thank you to all those of you who give. And if you'd like to give to Church in the Wild today, you can do so in a number, couple of ways. Number one, you can scan the QR code that's on the worship guide in your chair. Number two, you can go to citw.faith and click the Give button. Number three, you can text the word Give to the number that's on the screen. Number four, you can place cash or check in the offering box that's in the Connect Center. Speaking of the Connect Center, here at Church in the Wild, we believe that everyone, no matter where they are on their spiritual journey, has, they have a next step. And we believe that that next step begins in the Connect Center. So we hope that you'll join us in the Connect Center after the service. In the Connect Center, you can learn about information about things like our brand new Grow Group, which begins Monday. And we're so excited. We're going to look at the spiritual discipline of Sabbath all throughout January. And we're going to draw closer together, grow closer together, grow deeper together through that group. So I hope you'll go into the Connect Center after the service. I hope you'll get information on it, and I'd love to see you there.